Hi guys, welcome to the notes for 2-3. We are going to review multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Getting right into it, the direction state simplify the following rational expressions. The first one, we have 5x squared over 10x to the fifth. And hopefully you're feeling pretty good about these already. You've done them in the past, but if not, please make sure you're following along. Remember, when we're dividing, that's what the fraction bar means. When we're dividing, you can cancel out factors. Okay, so when you have the same factor on the top and the bottom. So for instance, if we have five times x squared on the top, we're dividing that by a two times five, which gives us 10, times an x squared times an x to the third. Now, do you always take it and write it out like this? No but I'm just emphasizing to you that we look for the common factors, right? The fives would end up canceling, x squareds would end up canceling, and what we have left over, remember, are ones, not zeros, they're ones. Something divided by itself is one. So we have one over two times x to the third as our answer. The second one, we have a trinomial divided by a binomial. And one of the things we've learned in the past is we need to make sure we're looking for factors. So x squared plus 7x minus 8. We should factor that into x plus 8 times the quantity of x minus 1. That should be over the difference of squares, x plus 1 times x minus 1. After it's factored, we look for those common factors, just like we did in the first one. All right, those cancel out, and our answer is x plus 8 over x plus 1. Now please remember, we can't simplify this anymore. We cannot cancel the x's because they're not factors. They're each a part of something greater, right? x plus 8 is a factor. x plus 1 is a factor. Those expressions are considered factors in themselves. So you can't just take it and cancel out part of an expression. Looking at the last one, we have x minus y divided by y minus x. Now, what's the relationship between x minus y and y minus x? Well, they're opposites. All right, what happens when you divide opposites? If I took 3 and divided it by negative 3, they're opposites. I get negative 1. If I had negative 4 divided by a positive 4, I get negative 1. Now, before we just take it and say it's negative 1, let's try to rewrite it so they have the same factors. For instance, if I have x minus y on the top and I want an x minus y on the bottom, I can actually factor out a negative 1. Okay, what would be left over if I factored out a negative 1? Well, I'd have a negative y plus x, right? They would each switch their signs. And then if I flip them around, I would have x minus y left in there. And when they cancel, x minus y and x minus y, I would be left with 1 over negative 1, which we know is negative 1. It's going to be important that you're able to recognize the fact that we you know, can factor out that negative 1. You will need to be able to do that. Next one says perform the indicated operation on the fractions. I know that there's a lot of kids who hate fractions, and I you know, hate might be a, a nice word for that, but let's just look at a quick little review when there's numbers, and then we'll apply it when there's actually algebraic expressions. Two-fifths times three-fourths. You have two options. One option is to go ahead and multiply straight across. Two times three is six. Five times four is 20, and then reduce that fraction, right? You could think about it as being two times three over two times 10 cancel out the twos, and the answer is 3 tenths. Or you have the ability when it's set up like this for multiplication, we can look to cancel out factors. They're already broken down a little bit, but we can look and say, hey, you know, two and four share a factor, right? Two goes into two once, two goes into four twice, so you can reduce it before you multiply it as well. Now we're going to do 1 times 3 is 3, and 5 times 2 is 10. It doesn't matter which way you do it. 
You can simplify then multiply or multiply then simplify. It's up to you. What happens now when we end up dividing fractions? Remember that just adds one step to it. First thing I would do is take it and rewrite it as multiplying by the reciprocal of the second number. Now it's just a multiplication problem like the first one was. I don't see any factors in the denominator that we also have in the numerator, so we'll just multiply straight across. 2 times 4 is 8, 5 times 3 is 15, and that's it. The last one, negative 2 thirds divided by a 7 ninths, which sounds exactly the same. If I write it like this, I read it the same way. Negative 2 thirds divided by 7 ninths. In which case, then it would be like this problem up here, and all we would do is say negative two-thirds, change the division to multiplication, and flip that second fraction. Now I can look to reduce. I know three goes into three once, goes into nine three times, and I get negative two times three is negative six, and one times seven is seven, and negative six-sevenths is our answer. Okay, so don't be afraid to take this and rewrite it if you need to when you're going through and simplifying a fraction divided by a fraction. Now looking at multiplying rational expressions that are more of the algebraic nature. Directions here state, when multiplying and simplifying rational expressions, it is necessary to first factor both the numerator and the denominators before canceling any terms. Again, remember, I cannot cancel out x squareds because they each have something added or subtracted from them. Those are not factors by themselves, so I cannot cancel it out. So the first thing we'll do here is just factor each of these. x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. That should be x plus 2 times x minus 2. Our denominator is a perfect square trinomial, so we should know that that's going to be x plus 2 times x plus 2. We're multiplying here our numerator of the second fraction, x squared minus x minus 6. That's one of the ones that's usually missed more, than, more frequently than others because is it, um, I don't know, some, for some reason with the, the minuses, we sometimes forget in the back that the signs have to be different. So if you're rusty on your factoring, remember, signs have to be different here. So you've got x plus, x minus, and I think we're going to have a 3 for our minus and a 2 for our plus, because we need more negatives than positives. And on the bottom, we should have an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. And, you know, when you're multiplying, it's like this is just like one big fraction. All the numerators are being multiplied together. All the denominator terms are being multiplied together. Let's look for the ones that they have in common. x plus 2 can cancel out with x plus 2. This x plus 2 could cancel out with this x plus 2. This x minus 3 with this x minus 3. And remember, those are all 1s. So it's like 1 times a quantity of x minus 2 times 1 times 1, or just x minus 2. And on the bottom, 1 times 1 times x plus 3 times 1 will give us x plus 3. And that is our final answer. You cannot cancel out anything else. Next example, simplify the following rational expressions. So if it's me, you know, you can start to factor right away if you want to. But when I notice this division, I'm going to go ahead and just recopy this problem as multiplication. Because I know a lot of people... And I think I know a few people even watching this video who made the mistake of trying to do it all at once. And sometimes we forget to flip the second fraction when that happens. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it, then factor it, and then finish simplifying. So our first expression up here, a to the third minus 6a squared. Looks like our greatest common factor in that one would be a squared. So we have a squared times the quantity of a minus 6. In the denominator, right here, we have a squared plus 2a minus 3. So remember, different signs. You're going to have a plus 3 and a minus 1. Now we're multiplying, and in our second 
fraction in our numerator, a squared minus 2a plus 1. Hey, another perfect square trinomial. So a minus 1 times a minus 1. And in the bottom, we have just that a to the third power. Now we're to the simplifying phase. Let's look for common factors. Well, a to the third is like a times a times a. Okay, so those are factors. a squared is like a times a. So we can cancel out two of these ones, with two of those ones, leaving us with just the a. We have an a minus 1 in the denominator and an a minus 1 in the numerator. We can only cancel out one of those. And I don't believe anything else will end up canceling. So our answer for this one should end up being a minus 6 times an a minus 1 over a times a quantity of a plus 3. And we can just leave it in its factored form. That's I'm fine with that. All right, next one. Simplify the following rational expressions. x squared minus y squared times a quantity of 4x squared plus 4xy over x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. All right, let's just look at factoring. Remember, this is like being over 1. So that is a difference of squares. We have x plus y times x minus y, and it is in the numerator, times... When we look at 4x squared plus 4xy, you heard me say 4x twice there. So we've got 4x as our greatest common factor, and that would leave us with x plus y. In the denominator, looks like a perfect square trinomial. x plus y times the quantity of x plus y. Now that everything is completely factored, let's Simplify, I have an x plus y and an x plus y. Looks like an x plus y down here and an x plus y up here. And I believe that's it, because all we have is 1 left in our denominator. So multiplying straight across, we should have 4x times the quantity of x minus y. Right now it's all over 1, so we'll just leave it as 4x times the quantity of x minus y. Final answer. Moving on to the next problem. We have a complex fraction here with fractions and fractions. Again, remember that is the same thing as saying 1 minus x squared divided by 6x plus 8. And you could say divided by x squared plus x minus 2 over 9x squared plus 24x plus 16. And if you want to start factoring and change it all at the same time, you can do that. Just please be careful. Otherwise, I would take it and go ahead and flip it and turn it into multiplication, then factor it. Or you could have already done that in the previous step if you were careful and paid attention to what you were doing. None of these are very difficult to factor, so I'll just take the time to actually write them out. All right, first one, difference of squares. And I'm going to kind of emphasize this one. Order does matter here. This one's not going to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. It's 1 plus x and 1 minus x. There's always a few people that want to just go ahead and switch it. It's not the same thing when you switch it. It's the opposite. In the bottom, we have a common factor of 2. If we take that out, we've got 3x plus 4. Then we have times. In the top, a perfect square trinomial, right? 9x squared and 16 are both perfect squares. And if we multiply their square roots, uh, if we add them together and multiply by 2, we get 24. So this is 3x plus 4 and 3x plus 4 again. And then on the bottom, we should end up with an x plus 2 and an x minus 1. And now it's just simplifying time. We'll see 3x plus 4. And it looks like that might be all that will simplify at the moment. Now remember, 1 minus x, x minus 1 are opposites. 
If you want to factor the negative one out, you can, or if you just want to recognize that they're opposites and cancel this out and make that one, cancel this one out and make this one negative one. But don't make them both negative one because then the negatives would cancel out. And we can take this one now and write out our answer. It would be a negative quantity. And I'm going to flip this one around because I can. X plus 1 is the same thing as 1 plus X. Then we have 3X plus 4 over 2 times the quantity of X plus 2. And that is it. So it doesn't simplify a lot, but it does a little bit. Hi, guys. This is one additional problem I wanted to add into the 2-3 notes. There are a couple problems in your homework that are similar to this one, and I wanted to make sure that you were comfortable with them. The problem states 1 minus the fraction x over y in parentheses, and we're multiplying that times 5y over x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. The reason I think there may be some confusion is when we look at this first quantity here, it's not a fraction by itself, right? We have a 1 minus a fraction, but we'd like this to be just one fraction. So we need to find a way to combine the 1 and the x over y so that it's one fraction. Well, to do that, we need a common denominator. So remember, when you have 1, it's like 1 over 1. So we need that common denominator to be a y. So if we think about the 1 as y divided by y, now we've got that common denominator. We can rewrite this expression as one fraction, right? If they both have the same denominator, we could rewrite this as y minus x over y. Now that we have that, we can take it and look at multiplying our fractions together. To do that, what we're going to need to do first here is see if everything is factored. And obviously our denominator in the right-hand fraction is not factored, so let's do that. We're going to have x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Looks like a perfect square trinomial, so that should factor into an x minus y times an x minus y. That's still under a 5y. And then our other fraction is y minus x over y. When we look at trying to cancel things out, we have x minus y and y minus x. Remember, y minus x is the same thing as saying negative 1 times an x minus y. These are just opposites of each other. So if we rewrite it like that, we can cancel out the x minus y and the x minus y. Just remember you're left with the negative 1. And I think we can also cancel out the y down here with this y. That will give us, when we multiply across, a negative 5 over, and that's 1, that's 1, so it looks like we're going to have just an x minus y in the end. So there's our answer, negative 5 over the quantity x minus y. But like I said, my main focus here is just taking this first statement and trying to rewrite it as one fraction, like we did right there. If you have questions about this, you should reach out because you're going to see some of these. Thanks for watching.